Welcome to the City of Miramar, Business Connect, where we connect your business to what's important. I am your host, Johnny Douglas Jr. Today we will be discussing how to deal with mental stress of operating your business post COVID-19, post Delta variant, and also now dealing with Omicron. How do we handle those stress levels? Well, today as our guest, we have with us Dr. Clarence M. Lee Jr. He is the founder and CEO of the Persistence Coach and also Exhort Health. Welcome, Dr. Lee. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and um, yeah, hoping to add some value uh, to, to your audience today. Dr. Lee, we are, Dr. Lee, I'm, you are, I'm quite sure you're going to add a lot of value with your expertise and, and um, what you know and what you do for your patients. Um, Dr. Lee, we, we met on LinkedIn and have had conversations in the past. Through those conversations, um, I've learned to respect and actually look forward to your inspirational um, videos that you put out and also your, um, your comments that you made on that. It really, really, um, especially during those stressful months, um, you were very, very committed <clears throat> to making sure that you kind of kept the, the mental um, capacities of everybody who read them and saw them and listened to you down at bay. Um, you were very, very good about that, um, making us feel like, wow, I can see the end of the tunnel for this. So we thank you for that. It's, uh, it's, it's one of my gifts. It's actually one of the reasons I feel like I'm, I'm on this earth uh, and to uplift and encourage people. So in every role, every platform, any capacity, um, and we'll talk, we'll, we'll probably get into this in the interview, mm -hmm. but um, I try to bring intention into what I do. Uh, so it makes a simple LinkedIn post now be related to something that's larger than me and also connected to my purpose, uh, my inner self. So then it, it, uh, it elevates um, the, the, the meaning of what I'm doing. So um, that's, that's why you see that. And, and I try to be very intentional with what I post, um, all in the lane of an encouraging, encouraging people. And I feel like right now um, we, we really need, we, we need encouragers. Uh, in, in the marketplace and online. We do, we do. And I'm glad you said that. And one of the things you said that has really sparked um, um, a, a jolt in me this morning was that you said your passion and your purpose. Uh, most of us go through life and sometimes we haven't tapped into that. We haven't tapped into our purpose and our passion. And when passion be purpose, wow, what an explosive person you become when those two things meet. <clears throat> well, in your, you are, well, first of all, I'd love to just go ahead and um, just just talk about you. Just 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 sing your praises of all the accomplishments that you have made. Oh Stop it. Um, first of all, your first love, your first your first business, your first um, practice that you do is the persistence coach. So that's a national. You're a nationally um, celebrated author. You're an international speaker. You are a person, you are a person who develop enterprise that conducts life training experiences, and you have high performance and mental um, um, conditioning for professionals. <clears throat> I mean, so <clears throat> sorry. So your focus with persistence is to focus is to focus on the mental well-being of your patients. Absolutely. Um, so I, I kind of wear, um, I, I wear two hats. So one in my physician hat, uh, in my practice of medicine, um, and also is my in encourager hat. So many of the things you'll see online is me wearing my encourager hat. I'm not necessarily uh, giving medical advice or, mm -hmm. or, or talking about medical conditions, right. but I do focus a lot on um, encouraging and uplifting the mindset of individuals. And so with, uh, with my coaching training and books, that's really what that is about. It's taking the individual, uplifting them, um, and elevating what they do from day to day. And uh, Exhort Health is my care organization. So this is where I practice my profession as a physician, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's occupational medicine and urgent care. And so that's what we do. So our, our kind of focus is 
uh, encouraging people and elevating care. So every person that comes in that door, uh, we're looking to first encourage them and kind of elevate that patient uh, experience. So um, yeah, so th those are the things that I do. Uh, I try to bring my encouraging to my time with the patient. And uh, I try to also um, take that encouraging, that encouraging spirit that I have and create products in the marketplace like books and, and online courses and coaching so, um, so I can help folks in as many ways as I can. That's awesome because we need encouragers, but also a different, I think you're a different, at a different level as being a physician. <clears throat> Most physicians don't take that opportunity to do the uplifting part, um, to do the, um, I'm gonna spend time not only um, developing your health for you, but developing your mental health too, and kind of push you in a direction where you can be not only healthy physically, but mentally, and also career-wise choices. Would that be correct? Absolutely. And one of the things that is, uh, it's, it's studied, but not in a traditional medical sense, is the connection between our psychology and our physicality or our physical self. And the connection is, 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 is intensely strong. And through my practice of medicine, I have learned that in varying, varying uh, situations. So for me, in the beginning, when I first kind of started, um, you know, one of the in, in medical school and, and, and in residency, uh, one of the things that you hear as a provider is about the uh, non-compliant patient. Mm -hmm. So this is the patient that you have given the instructions, you have given them an explanation of why this medication will help them or why this lifestyle change will uh, help them. Um, but for some reason, the patient is not taking the medication, they aren't mm -hmm. taking your advice, they aren't following the instructions, and it's really easy on, with our physician hat is to put the patient into the non category, meaning the patient's non compliant. They're not going to do what, you've te what you're telling them to do. They're not going to do it. They're non compliant. But for me, like, I was like, I would hear the non compliant. And the question that would keep coming in my head is why aren't they compliant? What is driving that behavior? because you could give the patient education, but they still could behave a certain way. And so wow. for me, I wanted to get into understanding why the patient was making the decisions that they were making. Now that is, um, that's a different conversation. That's wow. uh, a, a conversation that's not focused on, hey, here are your symptoms, mm -hmm. here's what you need to do. This is a conversation that's focused on motivation, intrinsic motivation. This, this is a conversation that's focused on, you know, why is your health important? Why right. do you need to be healthy? Who are you right. healthy for? Uh, that, that, that dives really deep into the person's what's mm -hmm. motivating them intrinsically. And so in my practice, um, I really try to get a good grip on what motivates the patient. Because if I know what motivates you, then I can help you to change behavior. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the majority of the things that we are, um, the ailments are now people call the comorbidities uh, with, with the middle of this, this pandemic is um, many of those conditions are self-induced. So these are things uh, that our lifestyles drive. So mm -hmm. if I can elevate the motivation, then now I can connect what you eat or your diet or your exercise to a higher purpose, a higher, uh, a, a higher level. Mm -hmm. And now I can, I can influence behavior. So that's the, you know, that's kind of um, the connection between wow. the two and why I think you cannot disconnect the psychology of each from their physicality because the two really go hand in hand. You, you know, th those are very, very important statements that you made because when I, I'm in my profession here at the city of Miramar, I, I develop businesses. I help um managed and developed businesses through resources and everything and resources and information that we provide through the city. One of the things that I find out when I'm talking to business owners is that it's a huge um, uh, barrier. And it's not a barrier that's, that's um, induced by certain entities. It's self-induced, like you said, um, that feeling of overwhelmingness that I can't do it or that feeling of, or that feeling of a failure. 
or that feeling of anxiety that comes in because you are in a place now where you're at a standstill and you don't know what to do from this point in time now. So I'm running into all of that. And when you said what you said that to get to the triggers, one thing I, when I worked at Comcast as a regional trainer there, what I would do was would, uh, tell, would, would tell my students there, um, don't focus on the triggers, get to the root of the problem. Because mm -hmm. you are acting out of what the problem is, the root problem is. So you're just acting out based on how you feel deep. It's, we, we need to tackle, like you said, the root cause of why you're thinking the way you're thinking because you're thinking the way you're thinking because there's no other way out for you. That's your defense mechanism because of that's the issue. Would that be correct? Absolutely. And I think the shift to um, in our current environment um, is there's a lot of, oh, I forgot, there's motion detection in this office. I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to get up and do some, some of this. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> My lights will turn off if I stay still. Um, uh, so to connect it to what we're what we're going through currently is mm -hmm. it's a it's a mindset of, you know, really what's your focus going to be. So if we're talking right. to business owners, uh, my encouragement uh, to to myself, to mm -hmm. other business owners is really to focus on what you can control and what you can do. If it's pivoting, okay, if it's pivoting or hey, the, the, the uh, coronavirus is affecting my business in a negative way, right. okay, well, how am I pivoting? And the pivot right. is really focused on what you can control. Right. Now, when, you, when we get caught in a, uh, a, a, a passive stance where we're focusing on what we're fearful of, then our mind, our mind, our efforts, our energy, our emotions, and now are attached to what we are fearful of. And many right. times the fear that we have uh, uh, focused on is really an imagined fear. So it's a fear that's something that's going to come in the future, mm -hmm. something that hasn't actually happened already. If right. it's happened to you already, you're not scared of it anymore. It already happened. It, 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 okay, uh, my revenue is down. Like that. that is a reality. That's not necessarily a fear. The fear may be my revenue will continue to decrease, right? Mm -hmm. So if, I, if, if, the, if the thought is that, and that's the thought that's drawing my focus, my energy is going to there. So my encouragement really is, is to focus on what you can control. So if you're in a place where, mm -hmm. uh, hey, I failed, this isn't working, then I, I would be, if I'm working with you, and if, we, if I'm encouraging you, uh, you know, I would be driving conversation around mm -hmm. what can you do, what is in your control, Right. Okay. And how can you pivot right now uh, yeah. in this current environment? But it's really about what you can do, and uh, and not not necessarily the fears of the of the future. <clears throat> okay. So so that was you answered one of my questions. One of my questions was um, the conversation that you have with your um, patients is what you just said. Um, trying to figure out what are your triggers. Just get down and explore what it is. But also let's tackle that fear. Um, the fear of the unknown. Um, as I talk to as I talk to business owners, one of the things that you did say is is very apparent to them to me when I, when I talk to them is the future. Um, some business on most business owners are afraid of what could happen. Like you said, um, well, I'm I'm in this pandemic, and I don't know if I want to order a lot of food. You know, like you know, because what if I can't sell it? You know, or I, how do I bring staff back? But now the question is now, does staff even want to come back and work? Can I even afford the people that I had working? Can I even do that right now? So what all these things is going on with them, uh, one of the things that I would like to um, find out from you is how can a business owner tackle some of those, those mental stress levels that when they get to that point, what are some of those what, is, what are some suggestions that you may offer them that can help them like, okay, recenter, refocus? Because one of the things that people try to do is pivot. And some people don't know how to pivot properly. There's a way to pivot. But how, how do you pivot properly that is beneficial for you financially, mentally, and for your business day-to-day -day work? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I, would, I would probably start with 
something that many business owners and many folks, but especially in entrepreneurs, is kind of rampant is, um, you know, it's taking care of yourself. So many of us, because our, our, our businesses are um, all kind of all consuming, a lot of us have small teams. Mm -hmm. If you're a leader, you're doing 17 people's jobs that maybe a large corporation might have, you know, multiple departments where you're doing it all yourself. So what, 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 what can that lead to? That can lead to uh, you working 24 seven and being on the clock 24 seven. Okay. And we have learned from multiple studies in humans and all kind of animal studies that we need our rest. We need rest and restoration. That is an actual requirement for us to optimize our performance. And so I used to be in the military. Um, I was in the Air Force. I, I was a flight surgeon, and this is a, a, a physician that specializes. It's a it's a really specific uh, area of occupational medicine dealing with aerospace uh, employees. So these are people that work at altitude, so flyers. And um, one of the things in the Air Force that we really enforced, and the FAA enforces it as well, mm -hmm. is this concept of uh, crew rest. <laughs> so. The pilot, an Air Force pilot is required to go into crew rest a certain mm -hmm. amount of time before uh, he or she is, is, is going to be flying. It okay. is, it's not optional. <laughs> it's, it's not, uh, hey, get to bed whenever you can get to bed. It is actually required that you are in crew rest. Everyone knows that you are in crew rest. No one calls you. No one stops by your room. You're in crew rest, and it's a protected wow. time. Now, how does that kind of translate to, say right. you're not a pilot and you're not flying a, a plane full of, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of people, maybe that's not your job, but how to translate? Well, uh, translate is what we have found in studies with, with aviation is that your hours of awakefulness affects your performance after a certain point. So uh, it doesn't matter how many energy drinks, it doesn't matter how many cups of coffee, once you hit 10 to 12 hours of being awake, your performance will decrease. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a human, uh, it, it's part of the human condition. Um, now, that, how long you're uh, able to stay awake before you start to exhibit fatigue or decrease your performance is really based on how much rest that you've had. So the reason why I'm talking about that is because for it starts for the entrepreneur, it really starts with self-care. Are you taking care of yourself? Now, what does that look like? That looks like, hey, what do I like to do? I like to run. I like to surf. I like to play basketball. All of these things fuel me. So when I get to the office, I'm able to pour out, handle fires, deal with this person. Maybe this stress is happening. But how do I support myself? And that is through these activities that fill me up, doing the things that I like to do for fun. And so I will start off, uh, you know, it, it behooves me, I would have to start off that conversation with saying self-care has to become an elevated importance even now. And it, it's counterintuitive. Well, doc, you're telling me to go to sleep and rest. I'm, my business is, is, is not doing well. You're telling me to go play basketball and uh, I don't know how I'm gonna make payroll next week. Yes, I am. And it's with the promise that as you rest, you restore, you're rejuvenated, you're able to attack your problems at a higher level, rested versus not rested. So, you know, the beginning of it, the beginning of it starts with care, doing the things that fuel you up, finding what you like to do and making sure you're spending time doing that. After you're getting your sleep, you also want to make sure that you are doing what you uh, love to do. Some people it's painting, some people it's listening to music or playing music. Everybody is an individual. Everybody has their own thing that they right. like to do. But that's the first thing I would start with is how do I deal, somebody asked me, how do I deal with all this stress? The first thing I would say is, what are you doing for self-care? That's the first question. Wow, wow, that that is so well put, so well put. It's, I, re I, remember, um, I remember when I was, when I like again supervisor at um, Comcast, I would tell tell my um, my um, employees before you send out a message, 
in an email, if somebody's upset you, please don't sin. Go outside, take a deep breath, go to lunch, do something else different, get your mind off of the letter, the email that you're going to send, and come back and then reread it. And I bet when you come back, you'll formulate it differently. And it's the same thing you're saying when you, when you take that break and you go and you go fishing or you go to the show or you go out to dinner or you go to the gym or you go jogging. It gets your mind. And I've, tried, and I've done that on my own personally. I've done that um, where there are stressful days. And even during the pandemic, when we were locked in home and we were uh, socially distancing ourselves from society and the things that we love to do, gym were closed. You know, my, my son would ask me, Dad, how, how are we going to how are you going to go to the gym and stuff? And I says, oh, I got a gym here. I'll, I'll just go and I'll just use, you know, things around the house and do that. I'll do sit ups. Those things still work. You know, I'll, I'll jog around the neighborhood. That still works. You know, I was, so I did. So I had so midday doing all that work I had to do for the city. I made sure that I took time for me. I told one business owner that that um, that it's that it's important that you that it's important that you are the best advertisement for your business. If I see and you that you're tired, that you're run down, that you're depressed, that's a direct reflection on your business because you are your first representation of who your business is. You are your best marketing. You, you, you do that very well because you know your business like better than the people who put your marketing campaign together. You know your business. But if you are looking that you are not well, then that's going to explore me to have lack of trust in your product. Would, would that be correct? Absolutely. And we as um, small business owners specifically, and it, it, at the level of, of senior leadership of some of the large companies, we have to be able to uh, exude uh, the, the confidence and the positivity around what we do, why mm -hmm. we do what we do, and why it's important. Um, and so, you know, one of the one of the benefits that I wanted to make sure that I touched on is um, with physical exercise. We talked a lot about physical mm -hmm. activity, but with physical activity, um, you know, one of the things that has been, been scientifically proven is it elevates mood. It elevates your mood and it increases your optimism. So if I've got an entrepreneur that is maybe um, naturally pessimistic or say maybe they're just down, maybe they've just been getting you know, beat up and take it through the ringer through this. Um, you know, one of the things that can help you cope, scientifically proven, mm -hmm. elevate your mood, elevate your optimism is physical activity. Um, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing specific. It's not like, oh, I got to do curl. No, any mm -hmm. physical activity, run, walk, brisk walk, sit up, push up, jumping jack, whatever you want to do, um, it has been proven to uh, increase your optimism as well as elevate your mood. So um, these are clear benefits of this, and it will allow us to now come back to the situation, come back to the office, go into a sales call, go into a meeting with more optimism. And that is, um, that is exuded or that is sensed within who you're talking to, you know, how you're, how you're talking to them, how your inflection in your voice, all those things change when someone is optimistic um, and when they have an elevated mood. Uh, it, one of the easiest, is simplest uh, ways to see it is, you know, maybe you've worked with somebody and after they've had a, a cup of coffee, they're like, oh, you've had your coffee this morning. Huh? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but that, this, I'm not saying just use caffeine. I'm, I'm saying that exercise does that um, at a higher, more sustainable level without the crash of a, a substance or a caffeine or something like that. And, then, and just what's so amazing about it, it's free. It costs oh, nothing. Oh, man. <laughs> it costs nothing to do that. You know, there's, you don't have to take a pill. You don't have to go and get a prescription pill for it. It's just exercise. Uh, that, that is awesome. Um, you, you, now, you, you being a very busy, busy, you are so busy. Um, when, when, I look at, when I look at both your websites, uh, one is the other one is Exhort Health. When I look at this one, it's it's more uh, driven to upscale people to to their um, purpose. Is it more purpose driven? Is that one? That's what that one is more so. Exor Health 
uh, really has um, really has three hats. So okay. you know, I, I want to I'll talk specifically about the big vision of of Exhort Health. Um, but really, why I created the organization was because I wanted to uh, offer a um, a different way of doing medicine. Um, mm -hmm. And so, um, without getting too deep into it, medicine uh, has really kind of been taken uh, from a, a physician. In, in my perspective, you have a lot of uh, private equity that's in medicine, a lot of corporations that own hospitals, and the uh, physician has been relegated or positioned as an employee and not to run the business. Now, this has happened over years and years. And why is that important? Uh, why is that important? That's important because I feel like one of the reasons uh, why healthcare costs are so high and uh, why insurance companies are involved is because the physician is taken out of a lot of those decision making and would just make the decisions in the exam room, which is our expertise. So what I'm doing with Exhort Health is I plan to um, completely privatize uh, a healthcare system uh, mm -hmm. where I won't necessarily have to uh, take insurance money. Everything will be um, physician-owned, hospital, uh, mm -hmm. uh, multi-site groups, uh, you know, physical therapy, imaging. Um, and so that what Exhort Health will do is to connect the deliverer of the care with the payer. Okay. Right now, the pay and the deliverer are very different. So you have the deliverer of the care, which might be the doctors off of the hospital, that uh, has a, a view that they are billing someone other than themselves. Right. So uh, I, I performed the MRI, but now I have to bill someone that's not me. Well, if when I'm not billing myself, well, maybe I bill for more. Or if the insurance isn't going to completely mm. reimburse, maybe I bill for double because I know they're going to knock it down 50%. So the reason why I, um, I created Exhort Health was to really um, build a healthcare system okay. uh, that will be uh, supported by uh, sub subscription only. So kind of like a Netflix model um, where you have one fee, there's no billing, there's no co-pays, there's no uh, extra things that you have to be billed by. Um, you just pay one, one, one kind of... Um, subscription each month. Now it's going to take us some time to get to that to build right. this, but that was the original idea and, and what I plan to do with Exhort Health. Uh, right now where we're at is we, we've got a location that does mostly occupational medicine and urgent okay. care. We're doing traditional kind of insurance model, um, but the the infancy of the big, big vision to be privatized, we also do what's called direct primary care. So this is for folks that don't have traditional insurance. Mm -hmm. They will pay a subscription. They're able to utilize the benefits on the primary care side. Everything I can do on primary care, uh, an Exhort Health member will be able to come here and their families and um, and get all of the care that they need uh, for one simple uh, monthly subscription, kind of like a Netflix. It's not like in your Netflix, you pay your $14.99 right. and then, oh, you only get to watch seven movies. Like, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's all inclusive. And I think as I grow and as our membership grows, um, that user base is going to be able to support more product line. So I like to use Netflix because it's really easy and most people have Netflix. Well, how's Netflix playing for producing more and more right. movies? They produce movies now. Well, they have a user base that is large enough that now allows them to offer more content, more services to their employees. Right. I mean, to their, to their people that have subscriptions. Right. And so Exhort Health will, will, will do that. Um, down the line as our user base grows. Okay, wow. So this is this sounds very beneficial to business owners when it comes to employees. It's very, it sounds very, very beneficial for them when it comes from a financial standpoint. It's also for, um, for, your, for your regular residents to come in to your regular patients to come in. It seems more beneficial financially. And also, and, and it, for me, I, I kind of find it an oxymoron. Like you go to a physician to feel better, but when you get the bill, you don't feel good. You know, so it's kind of like, okay, so you're, you're helping me here on this hand. And then I'm getting this bill on this, on this hand here. So I'm quite sure that there's not too many people that are jumping on board of this when it comes to <laughs> um, how, how it, and, and I'm, I'm liking how it works because you're carrying... I'm seeing your heart and where your mindset is that you're caring for the patient. It's Total the, it's health, the, mental it's the capacity right. and all of that. And, and I'm telling you, 
going to the doctor's office is so scary for, for people because first of all, the affordability of healthcare, it, it, and that stops a lot of people. That's even stopped, that's, that, has, that has to have, and it had an impact on the pandemic spreading as much as it did. First, people couldn't afford it. They, didn't, they thought they had to pay for this. So who can afford that, you know? And who can afford to go and get the treatment they needed for it? You know, so those things kind of worked in hand in hand. It, it absolutely, it, it's the right thing to do. I feel like this is um, the way medicine uh, should be uh, a practice. And, you know, with the rising cost, all, all that equates to, in my mind, is decreased utilization, which means as the price goes up, the patient or the person that has the insurance is less and less incentive to use the insurance because I'm worried that I'm going to get a bill. How much is it going to cost me? Oh, my co-insurance is only 80%. That 20% now is going to have to come to my pocket. How am I going to pay for that? Where is that going to come from? And I didn't want to be sick. This just got, you know, it goes into a cycle where folks uh, don't want to come in. And, you know, from, from my model, Exhort Health's model will be, we want you to be here. Um, we want you to come in. I don't want you worried about, I don't want there to be any barriers to you, you utilizing your benefits. So I'm going to make it really simple um, for you. And so, um, you know, so that's kind of the, the, the idea. Obviously, this is going to disrupt, you know, it is, it, yeah, it, um, yeah. it's, it's a disrupt. This is a, it's an industry disrupting model. Um, but, you know, I feel like our current system is not doing that. I feel like we can do better. Now, I'm not saying anyone's wrong or whatever. I just think we can do better. We can do better by the patient. Uh, we can do better by the system. We can do this a better way. We can decrease costs and offer more services. I, I, that's just what I, what I believe. Um, and and we, we're going to do it here at Exhort Health. That's why, that's why we started. I, I think that's very commendable of you. And yes, you're, it, you, it's not going to be a welcome. You're not going to have a welcome mat thrown out at you everywhere you, <laughs> you go. But, but however, I think it's I think it's a very very bold uh, move um, for our time right now. Um, and I think it's and I think it's going to really really catch on. Remember, the pandemic was something that threw a monkey wrench in us in us as, as well. It disrupted our lives to to a point of standstill. But yet. Some of us and most of us have made it through that. And on top of that, some of us have done, some business owners and some organizations have done profitably very well through that. So therefore, some disruptions, although they may have casualties to them, can be very, very healthy for the environment and healthy for the country. So your disruption is going to be very, 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 very helpful to so many people. And I appreciate you for that. So thank you for that. Um, I wish you well with that because that's going to be a, it's going to be an uphill battle, but, but I think you're the man for it. And I, I think you're the one who can get it done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I, we're, we're excited. Uh, we'll start with, with one, one, uh, one location, uh, build out our, our, our patient base and, and uh, continue to add more and more in, in the future. And I think, um, you know, for, for us and in, in our current environment, we, we all have to be open to doing things in different right. ways. And, you know, many people say if it's, an, if it's not broke, then don't fix it. But the healthcare system, I would argue many people would say that it is broken. I don't it know if broken. anyone would say there, there's uh, nothing that needs to be fixed. I, I don't know if anyone would agree. So I think at this point, we are ripe for it. Um, yes. it, it, you know, it, it, it hurts my heart. It breaks my heart to see um how much this 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 virus has just disrupted many of us uh our our lifestyles lost people have lost family members people in the hospital right now um we need to support our uh providers of care and when you have an a, an external source like private equity or something that's that's running the medicine that's driving numbers they want revenue it leads to burnout on the on the mm -hmm. employee side. It, it, the healthcare providers feel like they're not valued. They feel like the people at the top aren't. At, they don't have their credentials. They can't take care of the patient. So right. um, they, they they're not feeling valued. So I feel like in in this model, I'm really trying to one support the providers, 
right. um, lower the cost uh, for for the patient um, as well, and 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 offer a, a higher level of care. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting time for Exhort Health for our our nation, and it's a long journey, but. You know, I, I told myself this is what I'm signing up for next 20 years. This is going to be my my uh, my purpose and mission is is to awesome. is to make change in this in this uh, industry. Awesome, awesome. I think everything starts with change. Um, think about it. If we didn't have a Steve a Steve Jobs, what would we be with when it comes to technology? Um, you know, so everybody has to go through change. Everything has to be redeveloped. And I, and I'm so glad that what you're doing is the same thing that most people had to do through a pandemic: reinvent. So now you're trying to reinvent how medicine is dispersed, how it's used and how it's paid for and how it um, helps the general public. So I, I appreciate that so much. But, but that's, that, those things are just the cutting, just the, just the, icing on, the icing on the cake of who you are. There are so many layers to you. One thing that I'm very interested in about you is your spirituality your spirituality and your profession, which gives you the power, which gives you the adrenaline, which gives you that motivation to move forward and um, in a road which you walk by yourself. Um, to, to what you just yeah. said with the, um, <laughs> with, with the um, exhort um, health, that is going to be a lonely road. Um, and it, it's going to take some spiritual uplifting for, your part, for, for yourself. If there's a song that says encourage yourself, um, to encourage yourself along the road that's when you um, go through that road. So what are some of those faith factors that you do have that kind of help oh, you and to your and to your disruption of what you're doing? But I can help, but that can also help business owners as well. Yeah, so you know, my, I I'm I'm Christian. So my faith is really the foundation of, of what I do and uh, exhort health, uh, being a Christian organization and, and healthcare isn't really new to Christianity. You know, the Catholic Church has built some of the largest healthcare systems that are in existence today. Um, and so it's, it's really a, a common thing that you will see um, in, in, in many Christians is the, is the healing portion of the, of the ministry. So that is what kind of Exhort Health is the foundation of that. But uh, for me, uh, what it does is it helps me to connect my day-to-day -day activity to something that is larger than me and to a legacy that is going to go further than me. And when, when we are uh, as a business or as a person, you know, we, we wear many hats. We, we, we own a business. We've got our families. When we are working for a legacy, something larger than us, something that I, I call will grow legs, it's going to grow legs and go without us. Mm -hmm. um, that gives us a different level of motivation. And for me, my faith is really kind of that foundation and the belief that, you know, um, God created me for what I'm doing. Wow. If I can get someone to connect what they do to why they exist, there's going to be very few things that are going to stop that person from doing that. Where now, if you're in a job where you don't see the connection between the two, if you aren't, uh, if the passion or the connection isn't there with the business model that you're in, then I would encourage you to go to a, a model where you are able to use your gifts where you feel like this is why you're here. And, and many of us have so many um, uh, passions and things that we get excited about. And, and, you know, it's my belief that the world will benefit if we use our gifts. We can use our gifts in an entrepreneurial way. There is a market there where you can use your gifts and make money and provide and support your family using your gifts. If anyone tells you that is not true, I am the, I am a walking testament to yes, you can just use your gifts and wow. everything else will kind of kind of go. So for me, um, you know, it was really kind of finding that connection and also, um, you know, understanding why I'm here and how I can use my life to be of service um, first to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but second to the, the community, everyone that I'm around. So if I can wake up and say, hey, I'm going to use my life to create a company, to create a, a, an environment, to use my words, to uplift people that are around me, to uplift people in the community, to make a positive impact where I'm at mm -hmm. or in the world, 
um, then I'm motivated a little bit more when I get up. I take, a, 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 I put a little more intention to what I say. Mm-hmm. I, I think a little bit more about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I might walk or stand or dress or present my way in a little different way if I feel like the work that I'm doing is at a higher level. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's what I would like to really encourage entrepreneurs, small business owners. What value are you bringing to the world? What is, what is significant about what you're doing? And once you understand the significance of what you are doing, you are here for a reason. You are here for a purpose. You have significance. Once you grab onto that, then you're going to be able to go out and make calls, do sales, do the do the um, what's required to run a business, but you do it with a different energy and you do it with a certainty that you know why you're here. And you know, and all of us. And the reason I say that is because everyone doesn't want to be in medicine, and thank goodness because I need people that are excited about tech. I mean, when I when we we're building this office out, I mean, the tech guy was just all geeked out about all the Wi-Fi and all. Stuff. I need mean, <laughs> somebody that is doing their thing, you know. And and we all have gifts, um, you know. The guy that came in to do the floors. I mean, the people that design the furniture, the people that make the chairs, the people that everybody has a a place to fit, you know. Um, and, um, you know, and that's, and that's, that's true in, 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 in my faith, you know, and, and, and the Bible it says something, uh, says something about the eye doesn't do what the hand does and the hand yeah. doesn't do what the foot does. And, yeah. and so it's, it's really true. I have seen that to be true in my life. We all have gifts and, um, we're intended to use those and the world will benefit from you using your gift. So if you're an entrepreneur, you have a business, understand the value that you're bringing, the significance of what you do, the problem that you're solving for someone, reconnect to that, reconnect to the value that you're bringing, elevate how you think about what you do, because that's the truth about what you're doing. You're adding a a significant, important service to the world. How you do that, how you present that, uh, especially right now, is going to be critical for business owners. So um, you know, just connect to what you're doing. Why are you doing it? Why is it significant? And being able to communicate that and problem solve. And, and that's what we're here. So I think uh, that's what we're here to do is a service. Other people, that's what I'm here to do is service and problem solve. And I want to do that to the highest capacity. Wow. Wow. You know, you, you said so many uh, positive things there that, um, that I always think about. I, I, I told one business owner back a while ago, probably a couple months ago, um, they were um, exhausted. They were just exhausted. So I've used, I, I've used everything. I've, I've done everything I could do. I've hired SBA. I've done um, protection plan. I've done all. I've done. I don't know what else to do. And so I told her. I says, remember one thing, that this too shall pass. But mm. also remember this. Think back the very first day when you signed the agreement and the contract of your business. What did you feel? And why did you start the business? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I think we have to go back to, the, back to the beginning. Why did you start this business? What value that you thought this business would bring to the community when you signed on that line and said that, hey, I wanna make this legal. I wanna make this a legal document that this is my business. And what were you thinking about offering the world when you did that? Mm. Have that changed? If that has not, if that has changed, then maybe you can reevaluate. But if that has not changed, then start there. Go back to that. Go go back to go back to the beginning of your business, and then from there, work your way back where you are. Because I think we'll find out when we go back to being. I, I find myself now. I'm at this, I'm at the city now working and I find myself that everything I do at the city, it, it's a, it's a reflection of my gift and my purpose. Um, and, and it all works together. So whether I'm in the pulpit doing a sermon or whether I'm, whether I'm at work doing a job, or whether I'm visiting a business owner, my, my words, my passion, my gifts, are there. They are flowing in every in every direction of that. And so you were right when you said those things. And I was like, wow, that that I see myself and everything I do for the city is a deep reflection of who I am. In a that different way or, or pivot, if you will, um, you know, recorrect, reconnecting to 
kind of that 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 service kind of mindset and what what service are you building and, and kind of elevating that uh, in in your mind uh, right now and and being optimistic about the future you know do those things that will help you become uh, more optimistic that's exercise uh, you know physical activity all those things are going to allow you to problem solve and to see path pathways to success a, a little bit better so I'll give I'll, I'll share one more metaphor with you but there's you know there's there's, there's a uh, say you're on a road and there's, uh, uh, there's lots of lanes. Say you're on a highway. Say you got mm-hmm. four different lanes. Uh, many of us have put in our mind that, you know, the fast lane, maybe the one that's over mm-hmm. to the right is the only lane for success. If you're not in, you're not in success if you're in any other lane. What, what I'm describing in totality, the rest, the physical activity, taking care of yourself, reconnecting mm-hmm. with what, what you do this for, what that does is allow more lanes to open in right. your mind to ways to success. And so what I'm describing is now, instead of just thinking we got these four lanes, what I'm describing is a process that's gonna, is gonna open four more lanes for you on how to, how to be, um, to, to have that uh, kind, of, kind of that security or that success or what, you, what, you're, what you're going after. It opens up more lanes. And so, um, you know, uh, hopefully that'll be a, an, an example that will, uh, kind of be beneficial to the listeners, but it's really about um, allowing yourself to look outside of your current situation, right. uh, open up more lanes to success, happiness, fulfillment, um, and, and that of the process I've, I've been uh, trying to explain today. I like the part about opening up more lanes outside yourself. I like that. I like that. I give you options to how you're going to go through this life and how you're going to um, handle your business day to day resources and that you can use information that is provided it's out there um, you just gotta Absolutely. grab it. well i also you've done so much work and you've been recognized for books you've written but the one thing that you do very well is you're a family man yeah you are a family man you are you are married so i guess a wonderful young lady and five yeah. kids you have yes. time for your job, for your work, for your organizations, to write books, to be writers and publications, to be known as the, to be not, be, uh, have the notary of a 40 top 40s. You've been a busy guy, but you still find time for that balance of work and family. How do you do that as a business owner? And now, is that healthy to do that for business owners? For for me, and I, and I share a lot. I'm kind of like an open book with, with my with my life. But I think um, you know what motivates a person is really significant. And so for me, um, when I was growing up, I didn't have the traditional family. My my father left when I was younger. I was raised by a single mom. Uh, I always had a desire from the time I can remember being alive is uh, was having a family. Uh, that was something that I always wanted, um, even more so than uh, success was the was the family unit because that was something I felt like I missed out on and so for me um my family is the reason why I do everything that I do so there is no me without my family there is no exhort help there's no speaking there's no books there's there's none of that um they are the reason why I wake up in the morning and do what I do and so if if there's ever a time where I am putting what I do ahead of my family um, that's the time that things have gotten out of balance for me. And that's the time where I feel the most uh, disconnected internally is when uh, the work is, 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 is overshadowing the, the family. And so for me, um, you know, my, uh, we're coming up on our, our 10th year of marriage, me and my wife, um, five, I've got five kids, 15, all the way down to two, five, seven, I mean, seven, five, and then two-year-old twins. Our house, I tell people, is all the way live, 24-7. Uh, it is an exciting place. Um, and I just, I love my, I love my me, I love my wife, I love my kids. And really the work that I do is legacy work. So, you know, most of what I'm going to say, I'm really simple. I have a few really simple ideas. But uh, for me, I'm able to connect the activities that I'm doing, even in this moment to uh 
connected with my gifts and to legacy work. So I am, and, and if you're able to do that, you're going to be able to move through life with yes. a, a totally different attitude. And so for me, uh, you know, my family's one of the, one of the reasons why I'm in business for myself. My family's is one of the reasons why I've created an entity that I can be proud of, create a legacy for, uh, something that I can go out and, 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 and talk to my kids about being a part of one day, hopefully. Um, but yeah, my family is my biggest driving force, my biggest motivator. Yeah, you know, I tell people when I go out and speak, um, there will not be a day uh, where I run into a no, an obstacle, a problem in the world that is bigger than my why. And my why is my family. So there's not, there's not going to be a day where I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I'm just, you know, I give up and I'm going to have to go home and look at my, my son or my daughter in the face and say, you know, daddy couldn't get it done today. That, that's not going to happen. You know, and that is just a stance that I've taken because my why is big enough. I'm going to do what I have to do, right? I would rather be out engaging in battle and doing those things opposed to my wife and my kids and all those things, right? So when you are working for legacy and something bigger than yourself, it gives you a whole another gear. But um, remembering why you do what you do is important. And so, you know, for me, doing things like this, taking time to encourage entrepreneurs, taking time to seed in the folks that are leading families. All of this stuff is, is why, I'm, why I'm here. Um, and it's connected to a bigger, a bigger kind of scope of how I want to use my life. But my family is uh, the greatest gift um, God's ever given me. And uh, everything that I do on a daily basis in a, work, in a workspace um, is to make sure I can provide and protect and, and and I'll be the leader in, in, in the household. So it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, significant role that I play. I take it very serious. And um, I've been blessed with one of the most amazing wives and we, we have a great partnership and um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an aspect of my life that brings a big smile to me and gives me a lot of motivation. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, that, that is, that is awesome. That is so awesome. So now I can end it all by saying to you, thank you so much for um, doing this podcast for us to getting, getting to know you and your business and, and your organizations and what you do for people has been a thrill for me. It has been really, really one that I've expected. I've been anticipating the whole 30 days now that we've been having this conversation, oh, wrapping up for this interview. I love the fact that you are being who you authentically are and the fact that you carry that over not only just for your family but for everyone else it seems like to me that your patients also become your family the way you care for them the way you operate and through them and people can see your gifts your talents and your skills and everything through that so really appreciate that what you offer to the community i wish you a lot of luck with both your organizations because they all are tremendous organizations um, so also, if you're out there listening, please go to our website, www.miramarfl.gov backslash EBD, capital EBD. That'll take you to our landing page of the Economic and Business Development Department. We have a lot of things going on for business owners out there. So if you want to get connected with us and find out what we're doing, everything from financial support, everything from um, certifications, we can do that for you. Also, if you want to um, find out more about the city itself and what the city of Miramar offers, we have people relocating from all over the nation to want to come over here to South Florida and be a part of our community. Go on www.miramarfl.gov and go to each department to find out more about us there. So we'd love to have you join us. We'd love to have you become a registered, vote, registered vendor in our city. We procure everything. Toothpaste, whatever you need, we procure it. Again, thank you for joining our show. Thank you for being here, Dr. Lee. I always say every time I end my show, don't forget to that one act of kindness can go a long way. So be safe, be kind, until next time. Mm -hmm.